Steve and Minecraft and Smash are completely changing the game, and also let's talk about the crazy Sora League for Smash Bros. Ultimate. What's happening, my block buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Blocked Content's Leak Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your content for today. Yes, there's two very important things to talk about today, because not only do we get Steve in mere hours from now, yes, it's almost time to finally play as our little blocked boy in Smash Brothers, and it's a huge deal on a couple of levels, right? I mean, it's a huge deal because it is a big third-party character, it's the next one in this Fighter's Pass, but also because Steve is going to be changing the game dramatically. Well, I'll talk all about the ways that Steve is actually changing the way that everyone plays Smash Brothers, but also the way that Sakurai had to change everything about the game to make Steve actually work. I mean, that's all out there, and we get to read and, you know, talk a little bit about that as well, but also let's talk a little bit more about how Nintendo actually approached Disney about adding Kingdom Hearts' Sora to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, but they were actually shot down. You know, that was actually in the plans at some point. We might still see it in this fighter's pass, but as of this moment, it doesn't really feel like that's actually going to be happening anytime soon. And that would be sad because a lot of people are now hoping for other big third-party characters to join the roster after this huge and beautiful announcement of Steve. I mean, a lot of people were saying when that trailer started for Steve and we really had no idea what character it was going to be, and we saw Mario getting smashed around, and then of course Sonic then forward smashed him way up there in a cave, and we saw the darkness all around and red eyes, a lot of people were saying this is going to be the Heartless, right? This is going to be darkness. This is basically a theme for Kingdom Hearts, so something like this is going to happen. But then it ended up not actually being something from Kingdom Hearts, but of course, very clearly being a Minecraft thing. So yes, that totally does make sense for people that are a little bit upset about that, that want to have a little bit more Sora in their Smash Brothers. But does Disney actually play ball with Nintendo? Well, we get to talk about all of that good stuff, and of course also how Steve is going to be changing the game for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate going forward. And of course, I've been also answering a lot of you guys' questions about Smash Ultimate and new fighters in our show, Question Block, where I answer your questions. What do I think of your favorite game? How do you start making YouTube content? Well, whatever you can think of, send your questions through to blockedcontentmail at gmail.com and I will answer your question live on the show in our next Question Blocked episode. And it's almost time for another episode of Block Talk, our brand new Let's Play show, where right now we're playing through Wind Waker HD. It's so much fun, me and my friend Corey actually just talk about life and video games and the stuff that we love in Block Talk. So please, if you want to support the channel, watch that episode. There's more coming, so I hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys. Guys, let's get into the main content of today, and that's first talking about Screen Rant's report posted by Dylan Warman about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate actually changing because of Minecraft. Changing so much. Well, we'll dive all into those biomes. Yes, that is actually a huge word for this brand new character that is dropping and the way that those stages actually work. Yes, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Minecraft stage, which is called Minecraft World, it actually features selectable biomes. Players can choose between multiple biomes when selecting the Minecraft stage in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, now that the games have finally crossed over. Going on to say that fighters interested in brawling in the Minecraft stage in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate can actually choose between different biomes for their skirmish. The crossover between the two games began with the implementation of Minecraft Steve as a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the talks for which began at least five years ago. When Steve's addition to the Smash roster was revealed, fans were so excited their enthusiasm actually crashed Twitter. Since his debut as a Super Smash Bros. fighter, Steve has been the subject of numerous discussions regarding his moveset, which is one of the most unique in the franchise's history. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate players have discussed Steve's ability to craft and build objects on the game's various stages, creating new obstacles on which to jump or weapons with which to assault enemies. With Steve and other Minecraft characters making waves in Nintendo's Melee Brawler more fighters, such as the Creeper, Bomberman, and Travis Mii Fighters have been announced. 
Then, pouring icing on the crossover's cake, Twitter user PushDustin, who we also frequently talk about in our show, shared a translation of a post from the official Super Smash Bros. Japanese account and revealed that the players can actually select different biomes in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate when fighting on the Minecraft stage. The image PushDustin shared shows six different biomes from which gamers can choose, from dry forests and a small village to snow snow-capped mountains and rocky cliffs, Smash's new Minecraft stage is six levels in one, with actually the post at Push Dustin saying, good news, you can select which biome you want to play in by using the following commands. Yes, that is really interesting, so you do stuff like press L plus A, L and R plus A, L and R and then the up stick N A, and then the stick to the right, and then the stick downwards, and L and the stick to the left and then A. So those are all the different ways to place the savannah stage and the village stage and all of that good stuff. When two popular titles cross over, the excitement showcased by fans is unsurprising. Pitting Minecraft to Steve against characters from a multitude of video game franchises on his home turf, nonetheless, is an intriguing mashup of lighthearted fun and curious fighting strategies and mechanics. Building weapons in Super Smash Bros. is a massive shift from the normal routine of waiting for them to fall from the sky if one isn't relying on their chosen characters' innate abilities and items. Super Smash Bros. has consistently been a franchise that has pitted characters from a wealth of universes against one another. However, those crossover characters used to only be from Nintendo properties. Since the implementation of characters from Final Fantasy and more, the Super Smash Bros. series has garnered a reputation for welcoming fighters from a plethora of series. Thus, it is no surprise that Minecraft Steve and some of Minecraft's biomes have made its way into the franchise, but their implementation is nonetheless a welcome surprise. Now also, talking a little bit more about Sora and Super Smash Bros. Brothers Ultimate. Of course, it is great that we get all these great third-party characters and we think about characters like Joker and Hero and then Terry, Banjo, Kazooie, and the awesome Steve that is now tomorrow dropping in Smash or in just a few hours from now if we're talking like world time zones. I mean, it makes total sense that Sakurai would continue this trend when there are still four other characters left, right? There's one first-party character in this pass. Will they repeat that or will from now on those final four all be third-party characters? Characters. A lot of people seem to think that Sora doesn't have a chance anymore since that Go Nintendo tweet actually went out saying, Rumor, Nintendo approached Disney about adding Kingdom Hearts as Sora to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but they were shot down. Now, of course, as we know from Steve, these conversations can range from, you know, a very short, brief email discussion to something that even lasts for as long as five years. That was the case with this Steve talk, right? So it could still be the case that after that, they resumed the conversation, and now actually something is happening in terms of getting Sora finally into that game. But we'll have to wait and see in what kind of a form they would want to do this, and of course, what could be the Disney of it all? Would they actually be involved? in getting Sora into Smash? Would they have to remove all the Disney references to the character if it's just Square stuff about it all? Or do they co-own that character of Sora? Well, it's really interesting to think about all of that, and I generally just want you guys' thoughts on, do you actually want Sora in the game? So, of course, I would love to know what you guys think of all this. If you actually comment down below, that could be featured and read out loud in our next video. And today's comment question is, do you want Sora in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? And as for a previous comment question winner, our answer answer actually comes to us from our user, Chris Sperry, saying, if they show off another character, it might be mid to late December and released in February. And each new character releases quarterly up to December 2021. I will 100% play the heck out of Steve if I'm good enough, then I'll add him to the main list. Banjo is my main with Terry my second. Steve is a breath of fresh air with those new mechanics and style. Praying for Crash, Doom Guy, or Master Chief, Dante, and Sora. So thank you so much, Chris, for your awesome comment. I totally agree. I think that it would be really interesting if we would get one more character this year in December. I called that in my video as well. I said, you know, December makes sense, and then the release in February, and then the rest of the characters, the rest of those three, will get trickled out quarterly within that year. So makes total sense to me, and thank you so much for all sending in your comments. These are so much fun to read through. And of course, a huge shout out to our latest Patreon supporters and the super chats you guys send during live streams. You guys make block content possible. So if 
you want to have yourself created in block content style or join me for discussions or even have your own ideas become animations, well, go to patreon.com slash blocked content. There's a bunch of incredible rewards there and they're waiting for you. And remember, if you're not yet a member of the blocked content family yet, hit subscribe now, smash that like button and ring the bell for notifications and all the news and fun you care about will be delivered on the daily to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you around the corner where there's always more blocked content. See ya.